right. Hey everybody, I'm Shane. I'm Lex from Admin Arsenal. Let's do this thing. Uh, yeah, Ultra BNC. We've, we've had, uh, oddly enough, just a, a handful of requests the last little while. I guess a handful, more than a handful, enough to, enough to make us do a, web, a webcast on yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, for people asking, how do, we, um, how do we build a package for this? And not, not only how do we build a package, but you, know, you guys offer tight VNC in your package library. Uh, why don't you offer Ultra? And there's, a, there's, a, there's just several a reasons. There's a lot of moving parts, and, and you have to customize it for your situation. Yeah, you really do. And you know, we'll show you how to do that, mm -hmm. but uh, that's a tough one. Yeah, it, it is. But well, if, if you would like, there is a package in the package library. You might have to uh, hit F5 or reopen your PDQ to play console. Um, if you want to follow along and, and, and import this, just keep in mind, you import this package, it's test only. Um, that's just gonna just gonna come right out and say that. And I don't know if we're gonna keep that out on yeah. the package library, but this is just to kind of help you out. If you grab go, it now, if you want it. <laughs> yeah, precisely. So if you go out to your packages, you'll see. Uh, um, I've got a filter here for Ultra, but you'll see Ultra VNC test mm -hmm. test only. All right. So feel free to import that and um, and kind of follow along. So if you're gonna build your and of course teach you how to build the package, but then again, you've got this built right now, maybe it'll work for you. Yeah. Um, let's, let's go ahead and, uh, and jump in. Yeah. Did you say, what did you say? Center of the window. Yeah. Oh, sorry, JJ. We're a little bit off there. Yeah. All right, so uh, again, we downloaded this. Let's just open it up and show mm -hmm. everybody what it looks like. Sounds good. So we've got quite a few steps involved here. <laughs> a few? That's a lot of steps. Might want to zoom in here a little bit, JJ. Hold up. up. Yeah, I love that. No, I, yeah, I want to show, show the steps. All right. There we go. Can somebody not give JJ crack just before the uh, <laughs> webcast, please? It's Only one sandwich. glass of scotch pre to prep, JJ. Only one. That was a tall glass of scotch. <laughs> tall glass. All right. So let's start off with a few things. And then I do want to show you kind of how you can, you know, get to this point. But first thing we do, we do stop the uh, service the, yeah. the, in, in case it exists out there. So this, this command just says, hey, net stop. This is the name of the service, UVNC underscore service. Now, Again, go ahead. It's the best practice. I mean, it's, it's mm -hmm. always a good thing to do if you're going to be uninstalling or installing. Just Affirmative. get that start yep. stopped. Notice the success codes down there, 0, 2. Um, 0 obviously means it was successfully stopped. Uh, 2 is uh, an error code, return code. That just means that the service doesn't Didn't exist. exist. So we, if the service doesn't exist, we're still accomplishing our goal. Uh, we want that shown as a success. But I also have this set in the options to uh, continue, even if it does reach a, hit a, a non-zero or two return code. I don't want it to stop here. We're just going to give this a, hey, stop the service, but move on. Yep. That's where the continue comes in. Now, I do uninstall um, in, in an existing version, and this is actually kind of important. Uh, I've seen success both. I've seen I've been able to upgrade without uh, without this, and I've also seen problems where you upgrade and don't uninstall a previous version. I've seen problems both ways. So, so. we take it to the lowest common denominator. Just mm -hmm. Get an old one off there if it exists. Correct. So in this one, I'm running on 32 and 64 bit because Ultra VNC does have uh, native uh, 32 and native 64 bit versions now. So they both use program files. Um, so this one, I've the, set, the conditions to run on 32 and 64, uninstall that stuff. Um, but I, the step three, just in the event you've got 64-bit machines with an older 32-bit version, there's a step here. It only runs on 64-bit, but it removes the 32-bit version. Yep. All right. And then we just start we just start off with a 32-bit installation. Now, if you want to download these files, obviously go out to, um, you know, old, uh, it's uvnc.org, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, Again, it's best to get your, your, your installs from the source, you know. Mm -hmm. Less likely for any uh, additional things to happen to be there. Apparently, that's not the site. Uh, <coughs> it's a, a ultra VNC, I don't know. uvnc.com. So. Close, we were almost there. So anyway, uh, uvnc.com, do your downloads. Uh, we, we are going to be doing this off of 
version 1.2.1. Now, notice we're using the EXEs. Uh, older versions up 1209, there's an MSI. Mm -hmm. Just so you know, I have never had success with the MSI. We've had a few people say that they have and a lot say they haven't. So I'm still using the old um, EXE. Yeah. The old EXE. But download from uvnc.com and uh, you're going to download the 32-bit, the 64-bit, as well as the add-ons. There's another package out there uh, called add-ons. Mm -hmm. You're going to want... Yeah, sure. Let's go to download. Let's hit a question while it's downloading. <clears throat> Will this include options for prompt and no prompt? DOS. Hey, DOS. Uh, you're going to need to set... We're going to show... Um, we're going to show this without a, without a prompt. We are going to show this with a password. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you want to set up any kind of prompts, I'm, I'm assuming you're talking about to have the, uh, the, the person sitting at the desk allow this to be used. Um, you know, it, that's up to you. Uh, but we're, no, we're not going to cover, we're not gonna cover that. that. Not there's, so, there's so many options. Yeah. We're going to show you just <clears throat> basically creating a password. Anyway, so uh, you know, download here. You're gonna, we're doing one to one in this example, as I mentioned. So you grab your x86 and your x64 setups, and then you'll see the add-ons. We're grabbing those as well. And the add-ons are really important, especially for like Windows 7, because... Um, Is that the... Uh, the mirror driver. Yeah, I was going to say the mirror driver. But that, if you don't have that on there, it's going to go a little bit slow. So yeah. suggestion... It, it'll work without it. Yeah. Now, when you're, now, we're talking about installing the uh, Ultra VNC server. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to show you this. Let's just go out. Um, give me a machine. I can remote. I can remote real quick. Mm, Costanza, Carla. Yeah, let's go to Carla. So nice thing about uh, inventory. Control R, boom. Mm -hmm. Remote desktop comes up. Now, just so you know, uh, on the remote desktop, you can't install the mirror driver using remote desktop. Just so you know. But what you're going to want to do is, if you're not going to use the package that we've got provided here. Um, you know, when you download these packages, I've got this out here. All right. So you can see um, downloaded these add-ons, and I've got a bunch of other things as well. Uh, Cert Manager 32 and 64, those are actually Cert Manager.exe, one for... 32, one for 64-bit. Yep, yep. um, I had to grab those from the Windows uh, Software Development Kit. You can download that. Uh, the reason for that is this is how we're getting around. If you want to install the mirror driver, you have to, uh, and, and you don't want to have the deployment stop because, you know, Windows is saying, hey, you need to provide um, approval to mm -hmm. install this driver. We're actually using Cert Manager to, um, to add that driver to the store. Mm -hmm. So it's, like I said, there's a lot of moving parts. Anyway. Um, yeah, we'll just cover this. Yeah, anyway, okay. when, you, when you run this, just so you know, if you want to use a, uh, an, I, uh, an answer file, we're yeah. using command line prompts, but if you want to use an answer file, then you would create it this way. Uh, so you, you basically need to go to a machine that doesn't have this and install it fresh and save your answer file. Um, so I'm going to come over here to, uh, why don't we have this set to run? Anyway, there we go. So I'm on this machine, I'm going to come over, this is a 64-bit machine, so I'm going to grab the 64-bit setup. Remember, you can always use a slash question mark if you want to look at, not always, it's a good, good, it's good a guess good, on that yeah, one. It's yeah. a good guess. If you want to look at the usage <clears throat> statements um, to see what silent parameters, and you'll see if you do that, then there is a usage statement uh, provided. Just so you know, um, sorry JJ, I know this is not ideal. There is, and it doesn't even show here because it's such a long usage file, there is a, um, no, this sucks. There's a, pa a slash password where you can, where you're supposed to, it's the last option, where you're supposed to be able to select a, the password. I've never been able to get that to work. Mm, nope. Just so you know. So, uh, just be aware, try it, but mm -hmm. we haven't had success with it. Yes. Anyway, if you want to, d to do this to save an answer file, you have to first create it. Mm -hmm. and what, an answer file is really just a way for the install to um, remember what settings you offer. So uh, you want to do a save INF 
equals, and then the path, I'm just going to put this on the root, the path to this INF file. And it actually, I, save INF, it doesn't have to be an INF file. In fact, it's probably best not to do it because a lot of you have um, uh, policies in your mm -hmm. environment to strip out INF files because of the potential danger there. So we actually just, I'll just call this a text. Something like UVNC dot text. And I'm going to put this on my C drive. So let's uh, slash save INF equals, hit OK. And then basically you're telling the installation to remember the settings that you make. So we'll say this, we're going to keep it English. And when the package that, we're in, that you grabbed from the package library, and what we'd recommend here, there's a lot of components to, um, to UltraVNC. You don't want to install all of them on your target computers. Mm -hmm. So basically, to say yes to these, notice you've got all these. I'm going to uncheck all of these and go to UltraVNC server silent. You want to zoom in on that, JJ? Uh, this is, you need to install the server piece. This yeah. is for your target computers. Uh, there's also a viewer. You don't want them. You want that on your console that you're going to go view their machines with. Correct. So. And that one of the tough things about these, uh, you know, uh, remote control software, people hear the word server and they think, oh, this is going on a server. Yeah. No, this is the server portion of this. It's going to be serving up the remote desktop, basically. Yep. So we just want to install this as a Windows service on a target computer so they really don't see much and they can't go and remote, remote control other people, other machines, because they don't have the viewer. So yeah. we're only selecting the server, uh, the service silent. And uh, yeah, we'll register as this as a system service, but we're not going to start or restart it. And insert. Off to the race as it goes. Mm -hmm. While that's running, should we uh, take a question? Yeah, sure. James F., why are we installing the cert in both the root and trusted publisher stores? I've only ever installed it in the trusted publisher and never had an issue. That's a good question. Um, when I first started building this, I only ever put, put it into um, uh, the trusted publisher, but I did, I did throw this one in root because I don't know, uh, like I think it was version 119, mm -hmm. I had some problems and thought, you know what, uh, it, it, got, it got around by placing it both in the root and the trusted publisher. So if you want to remove that line, there's, what he's talking about is this line here. Way to do your homework, James. Reading ahead mm -hmm. there, buddy. Way to go, bro. Uh, this is the, um, the add UVNC certificate. Notice it's a command step, got two lines in there. I'm adding one in trusted publisher and one in local machine root. You don't have to do that, but I solved the problem a long time ago. By doing that, it's an older version, and I just kind of kept it there, just so you know. But it's a good question. Yeah. Anyway, uh, we've, let's go back to Carla. So we've, we've run this, installed just the server piece. Let's go to C drive and find our output file. And there's UVNC text. Open that up, and you can see this. So how would you specify this uh, to, to silently install? Remember, we ran this with a save INF. Now you would do a, a slash load, load INF in your parameter, in your parameters. You'd load INF and the path to this. Actually, don't even put a path, just put the file. You would need to add this file to your... The directory where you're pulling your install file from, put it right there. Yep, place it in there and Make then reference easy. this. Yeah. But to get around this, we're just using this, we're just passing these same things in the command in the, in, in the actual parameters. Yep, yep. Um, and that's all we'll cover on that. I just wanted to show you that option. So if you notice, we're going to install, I'm going to go back to the 32-bit step here. Mm -hmm. So we're running that setup exe. Um, and notice the parameters uh, making this very silent. The slash sp dash makes, says don't even, don't show errors even if they appear. We're not going to restart. We don't want icons. The components. The one we want right mm -hmm. there. So. Server. And then the additional tasks, that's where we, uh, you know, install the service. So mm -hmm. this will make it a system service. And I have put this, uh, just a log on the root, UVNC log on your target computer. So this will exist out there. Uh, once again, this is a test package. Mm -hmm. so. yeah. And then as, uh, as mentioned earlier, we do install the UVNC certificate. And it's important to do this before you install the add-ons. Otherwise, you could get you know, problems. Yeah. Now, by the way, the mirror driver is not applicable on Windows 8 or 8.1 or 10. Um, we are still adding the certificate there, but when you go to install this um, on a Windows 8 or higher machine, you're not even given an option to install 
uh, in the add-ons. You're not even given the option to install the mirror driver. So it's yeah. really for the Vista and Windows 7. If you're going to do this on XP, we're not going to cover that. Um, on XP, you will run into some problems, and you'll probably need to use uh, DevCon. That's the device console. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, a, it's basically a command line interface from Microsoft to handle your hardware. Um, we're not even going to cover yeah, that. Yeah, that's a, that's a whole other story right there. Mm -hmm. It really is. Should we uh, take the next question? Is there another question? There is another one. Did I? You know what? I haven't. I think. Uh, Are you unplugged? You got hey, a battery. Get, get Sean in here. I think I'm not, if JJ's talking, I'm not hearing anything. So here's a question. If the error mode is continue, does the sex, does the, boy, does the success code even matter? I'm going to drink that success right now. Uh, okay, so the, that's a great question, Matthew. So if you set it to continue, does the success code even matter? It doesn't matter in terms of stopping the install. But it will show uh, an error. So if, if you don't have, if you have it set to continue and you receive an error that's not in your success codes, when you go look at the output steps, you will see a little error icon there. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not hearing, I'm not hearing JJ. So, anywho, well, a little, uh, so, uh, let's just go ahead. All right. It's actually, it's actually kind of nice not hearing JJ. <laughs> Much easier, huh? <laughs> Thanks a lot. Not like you can hear <laughs> There me. you go. Hey. Thanks, Sean. All right, so we've installed mm -hmm. the, okay, so now the cert, are we there? Then after you do the, now you okay. have to do the certificate before you do your add-ons, right. just so you know. Uh, and then we do the add-ons. It's kind of the same thing um, as you had with your setup. Uh, we are just, in this case, the add-ons, this is for um, non-Windows 8, Windows 10 computers. Yep. These are the components that we're adding, the mirror driver, the encryption plugins, and the SC hooks. Um, now, how do I verify, how do I know that this is not going to run on a Windows 8? Uh, a couple of ways you can do it. One, test it, obviously. <laughs> I don't want this step. I don't want this step. I don't want this step. How to do you run. want to make sure it doesn't run? You go to conditions Thank and you. say don't run on until it, where it can run, not where mm -hmm. it can't. So this is the 32-bit, so mm -hmm. this will only run on 32-bit architecture. Mm -hmm. And we're, we, we've removed Windows 8, 8, 1, and 10. Okay. Yep, there okay. You go. But we do have a... Copy drivers. This is important. If you, um, you know, Windows 8 and higher, they don't actually create a drivers directory. This has been an issue forever. Mm -hmm. And it actually may not even be an issue anymore. I just noticed they still don't do this. So I actually create the driver directory and copy those drivers out to the... There you go. To, so they can be referenced yeah. by the program. Yeah. And of course, conditions, we're saying only run this on 8, 8, 1, and 10. All right. And... Um, and then we have the same steps, effectively, but only for 64-bit, where you're adding those, et cetera, et cetera. And then... Now, is there any magic to making that cert? I mean, is it pretty simple? I mean, just click, click, follow the steps, and copy the cert, or what? Um, oh, you, you, you want to cover that? Do we have time to cover that? Or is that <laughs> one of those we should do another video on another okay, time? Okay, yes, because this, cert, this certificate in this package is going to expire in October of this year. Uh -huh. um, if you want to install this, uh, I'm going to go back out to car. Well, you know what? It's going to be kind of tough because um, you can't install the mirror driver over a remote desktop. Mm, okay. So I, I can do this over here. Let's we'll, we'll see if we can get this running. Stick with us, folks. We're on a remote desktop right here. You're right. Now. Yeah, we'll have to do a video for you guys on that. But Yeah, you, basically you have to extract the uh, certificate. Yeah. And um, you do that by going to the actual certificate file and running through a bunch of steps, extracting the CER file, and then placing that. Is the Microsoft file. documentation pretty decent on that? No, it sucks. All right, so don't go to Microsoft for that documentation. <laughs> if you have questions, let us know. Yeah, right? shoot us an we'll email. Throw. Actually, Brig um, and Jason <coughs> are planning on putting out a knowledge base article related to this, and they will have those instructions uh, included therein. Those are the guys who, anytime you shoot a, a help desk question, those are the guys taking care mm -hmm. of you. So Now, it is important. What, uh, the, the INI file, this is step 15, mm -hmm. is massively important because you're going to push this out to a machine, um, but you're not going to be able to remote control until you, until you run a few things. So basically, after you install, uh, I'm going to go back out to Carla. So after you install... Um, this out on the machine. You're going to want to actually go out on this, just the first machine, and uh, go to Ultra VNC and go to Settings. And this is where you're going to 
set this up according to the way you want it. Mm -hmm. All right. So if you want prompts and you uh, you want to change your password, the password we've got in this file is help desk, all lowercase. Um, there Pretty it is. Good idea to change that. So you change it. A, you know, I'm going to do help desk. Just change that right there. When you're done, you say OK. And in the uh, program files directory, UVNC BVBA, blah, 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 you're going to see an ultra VNC INI file. This needs to go with your other source files mm -hmm. because you're going to copy this out to all your targets. And this will have all the settings that you want so that those targets uh, receive this. How do we do that? Copy paste. Hmm. <laughs> you can use a copy step. We, we didn't yeah. do a copy step here because it doesn't work. Uh, we, we built it so that um, anything we make in the in the package, any, any packages that we provide uh, in the package library, they can't have nested package yeah, step no. and they can't have a file copy. So anyway, uh, I'm just using the old school command step mm -hmm. to say copy ultra VNC INI. Yep. And notice I've added that ultra VNC in the add files down here. So that's that is located right in my directory with, this, <laughs> with the setup exes. So copy that out to this directory, program files, yada, yada. And I have a slash y to overwrite in case it already exists. So let's, um, let's test this out. What do you say? Uh -huh. Oh, and then in the last step, when you're done, stop, start, the uh, start the service. Because we did stop the service before we copied the INI file out there. That's kind of important. Yeah, I can see how that would be. Mm -hmm. So we'll copy this out to a couple of computers here. Cunningham, Dunmire, Jack okay. Daniels, that's a favorite. Well, I like Jack Daniels because Jack Daniels is a Windows 10. We can verify oh, that okay. it works out there. All right. So we'll just do Cunningham. Cunningham's a 32-bit, seven, a seven, Windows 7 32-bit. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Dunmire is a Windows 7 64-bit. Yep. All right. So we're deploying those out. Now, we want a remote control from our console here. So what are we going to do? We're going to install the viewer. viewer. This is a manual step. We're not including this once again in in our in the package. So we're just going to go out to uh, our install file, mm -hmm. or install install location. Dang. Correct. Well, you started early today, didn't you? Apparently. Wow. I'm trying to say install file at the same time. Just not working. So I'm going to go out to 121. And this is a 64-bit Windows 7, so I'm going to grab the 64-bit setup. Once again, we're just going to install the viewer mm -hmm. here. This time, so. Go ahead and answer that while I fix this in my ear. Got a scotch. Scotch away, baby. Let's do a question. Actually, okay, go ahead. How will I set up a password for Ultra VNC? Uh, we just kind of covered that. What you do is you um, install this uh, on a target machine manually, um, go out to that machine, uh, edit the VNC, and then change your password in the security tab. Say OK, close it, copy that, that Ultra VNC INI file to your source files that you'll be deploying. All right. So you, uh, you just select, so basically Lex just said only install the viewer. viewer. He unchecked everything else. So now here's the viewer. Let's go and see where we are. So we're 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 getting close to it. Mm -hmm. So Cunningham is at the um, stop ultra VNC service step. And the answer, remember the previous question: if you hit continue, what's the uh, you know, what's, what, why would you, if you hit continue, why would you what worry you about the error? Yeah. Because just, it, it is nice to know. I mean, if, if you receive, we had a continue on the um, stop the service, but let's say that it returned a, a non-success code, you would still see an error on step one. Mm -hmm. Instead of green, you'd see a little error icon. And then you would know, oh, that this didn't stop it for whatever reason, but it didn't stop the, the whole package. That's, that's pretty much the only reason why. It's just for your own person, personal sanity. All right, so we've got Cunningham. I'm going to open up Ultra VNC Viewer now. And I'm going to say go to Cunningham and connect. There's the password. Remember, if you're using the, you know, what we have, it's help desk. Help desk. And then there's Cunningham. There we go. Hit control, alt, delete, and it works. Okay. Um, I'm going to come out really quick just to show you this. This is once again on Cunningham. I'm going to go out to uh, 
I want to go to the device manager. And under the display adapters, you should see the MV Video Hook Driver 2. Nice. So that's how we added that driver. No prompt was necessary. Um, if you do install a subsequent version, um, you are going to actually need to reboot that target computer because we don't uninstall the, the driver. We just try to reinstall it again. Um, so it would still work for you, but you would actually see a third option in this case, a third option saying unknown until you reboot, and then mm -hmm. you'd only have the one MV hook driver again. So Boom, there you go. that's just on subsequent installations when you already have that mirror driver exist. Now, uh, okay, so I've got my Ultra VNC viewer. If you're using PDQ inventory, I'm going to open up inventory. You can um, call this from with you can open up a VNC session mm -hmm. from within inventory. Yep. Go to your preferences. You're going to set up a custom tool. Mm -hmm. so, uh, no, you're not. No, you're not. You mm -hmm. can if you want, but we do have a native version for okay. under remote control. Well, and if go. you're using a really old, uh, much older version of um, inventory, we actually had a panel called VNC. Mm -hmm. but in the last few versions, we've, we've included that under the remote control panel. And there's your VNC. This is where you just say, where's your viewer file? Your files in my C drive and program files. So you'll just specify your viewer. There's your VNC viewer. We, I, we kept the display number as zero. That's just the default. Say OK. And now if I want to go out to, remember I was on Cunningham. Now I can go to Cunningham. Either hit Control-Alt-V or just go to Tools and VNC. Control-Alt-V is the shortcut. Boom, and that will, that will launch the viewer. It's so nice you, can, yeah. you can use a custom tool if you want, um, but that's if you want to pass additional, uh, additional parameters, parameters yeah. to it. So Anyway, so that's how you can uh, integrate that. And it really is nice. Let's go over to Jack Daniels. Let's put me on the spot here and see if this worked on Windows 10. So Jack Daniels, I'm going to hit Control-Alt-V. Boom. There it goes. There we go. All right. Hey, JJ, do we got any more questions? No, that's uh, Do we have, uh, are, are people interested in keeping this out there? Not necessarily that that will bind me by law, but do they want us to keep this out there for a little while? We'll see. We'll have uh, Annalisa. Yeah, we'll chime in if you want to keep it, guys. So. I will need to put out there that the, the, the password is help desk. Yeah. <laughs> I can put that in the description. Just so you know, yeah. Change this, yeah. Oh, for not, the certificate. I'm not hearing anything. Okay. okay. All right. All right. Do we have any other questions? All right. Well, hopefully that hopefully that answers some of your stuff. You know? Some of your stuff. That's a real generic ending, yeah. man. Hopefully that answers some of your questions. <laughs> hey guys, thanks for watching. Um, you you kick butt, Shane. Rock on. We'll talk to you guys later. Hey everyone, thanks so much for joining us today. If your question was featured, if you'll email me at webcast at adminarsenal.com, I'll hook you up with some swag. If you had a question you asked but it didn't get featured, we still want to answer your question, go to support.adminarsenal.com. We'll see you next week.